Here's Johnny! <laughs> Hey everyone, I'm Rebecca and welcome to Watch Mojo. Today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 best Stephen King stories, book versus movie. He's gonna laugh at you, no, they're all gonna no, laugh at you. You dirty bird, how could you? And when you're down here with me, you float down. For this list, we'll be determining which version of a particular Stephen King story is better, the book or the movie. We'll be analyzing the qualities of both, and at the end of each entry, we'll be declaring which version is the one worth experiencing. And be sure to let us know in the comments if you agree with our picks. All right, let's check it out. Number 10, The Mist. Something in the mist! <laughs> Something in the mist Damn. took John Lee! Stephen King and director Frank Darabont are spiritually in sync, as their collaborations consistently result in the best adaptations. King's novella The Mist is certainly worth reading, but it suffers from a few problems, primarily the short length of the story and the open ending in which the group heads out to Hopeful Sanctuary in Hartford. Are we going? Just as David Kep did for Secret Window, Darabont changed the ending to be much darker, having David euthanize everyone, including his eight-year-old son, literally seconds before help arrives. It's one of the darkest endings in movie history, and it really leaves an impression. By changing the story for the better, it helps make the movie adaptation the definitive version of The Mist. Winner, movie. Number 9. Cujo. Cujo? Cujo, what's the matter? This is by far one of King's most popular works, and like Jaws did for sharks, Cujo effectively changed the reputation of St. Bernard's forever. Famously written on a massive coke binge, Cujo is one of King's most relentless and grounded novels. There are no supernatural creatures of any kind, just a rabid dog out for human meat. It's not a monster, it's just a doggy. As with The Mist, the ending for Cujo is changed, but not as effectively. The novel's ending is far darker, as Tad dies in the car from dehydration and heat stroke. For whatever reason, this was changed for the film, and the story's impact is lessened because of it. The movie is also dull, with mediocre acting and little visual flourish. This goes to the book a thousand times over. Winner, book. Poor little monkey, playing out of bed. One rolls over, the other one said. Number eight, The Green Mile. Again showing off the unique Darabont King synergy is The Green Mile, a movie that took the world by storm and made $287 million in 1999. What kind of game is this? It's no game. See for yourself. King released the novel in a serialized format, releasing six novellas from March to August of 1996. It's a great book, and it won the Bram Stoker Award for Best Novel. But Darabont just has a certain energy and filmmaking charisma that's hard to ignore. I can feel it from here. You can't go wrong with either Tom Hanks or Michael Clark Duncan, and the latter gave a touching Oscar-nominated performance as the now iconic John Coffey. Don't put that thing up on my face. Don't put me in the dark. I was afraid of the dog. The movie is also wickedly faithful to the novel, making this one a toss-up. We'll give it to the movie, but it really could have gone either way. Winner, movie. Number 7. Misery. This is one of King's most personal novels. He wrote Misery as a means to deal with his debilitating drug problem, using Annie as a metaphor for the imprisoning nature of addiction. I love you, Paul. Your mind, your creativity, that's, that's all I meant. He was also influenced to write the story after fans vehemently rejected his fantasy novel The Eyes of the Dragon, essentially chaining him to the horror genre. You dirty bird, how could you? The 1990 film adaptation is wickedly captivating, featuring two powerhouse performances by Kathy Bates and James Caan. Bates is simply spectacular as Annie Wilkes, and her Academy Award win makes Misery the only King adaptation to have won an Oscar. The book is great, there's no doubt about that, but Bates is magical. Winner, movie. Think of me as your inspiration. Number 6. Pet Cemetery. 
While Misery is King's most personal work, Pet Cemetery is his darkest, complete with the death and reanimated corpse of a toddler, matricide, and filicide. It's fun stuff. Don't go on, Doc. No matter how much you may feel you have to, do not go on to the place. Pet Cemetery has been adapted twice, once in 1989 and again in 2019. The 1989 film is good for a few scares, but mainly falls flat, primarily owing to the bland filmmaking, wooden acting, and the goofy gauge scenes. It's quite difficult to make a two-year-old look threatening. I bite you something, Mommy. The 2019 version made some changes to the story, like killing Ellie instead of Gage and altering the ending. It was decent, but it was also a little jump scare heavy. Stop. Neither version is particularly good, making this a case of the book being better than the movie. Twice. Winner, book. Number 5. Carrie King's first published novel, Carrie, remains just as effective and relevant today as it was in 1974. The old woman now. Why didn't you tell me, Mama? It's a thrilling and terrifying book, told through a unique epistolary form. Two years after its publication, it was adapted by Brian De Palma. And what an adaptation it is. While certain parts of the movie are dated, like that now laughable final jump scare, it contains a fantastic cast and one of the greatest climaxes ever put to film. The blood, the lighting, the editing style, and Sissy Spacek's horrifying eyes all combine to create one of the scariest sequences in movie history. Forget the 2013 remake. The 1976 film remains exceptional, and it barely squeaks above the novel. Winner, movie. He's gonna laugh at you. No, They're all gonna no, laugh at you. Number four, The Shawshank Redemption. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living, or get busy dying. King's novellas often make for the best movies. Stand By Me is based on the body and remains one of King's greatest adaptations. Not to mention The Mist, which was previously discussed. But when it comes to novella adaptations, nothing will ever beat The Shawshank Redemption. His first night in the joint, Andy Dufresne cost me two packs of cigarettes. He never made a sound. Another King Darabont contribution to movie history, The Shawshank Redemption is widely heralded as a classic, ranking for many years as the top-rated movie of all time on IMDb and generating seven Academy Award nominations, the most of any Stephen King film. Nothing against King's novella, but there's simply no arguing against that kind of reputation. This one, again, goes to Darabont. Winner, movie. You understand me? Catching my drift. Where am I being obtuse? Number 3. The Shining Here's Johnny! <laughs> this is a tough one. Not because Kubrick's adaptation is bad, but because it's so wildly different from King's novel. Red rum! Red rum! Red rum! The novel is more personal, detailing the debilitating effects that the haunted hotel, the cabin fever, and the lack of alcohol all have on Jack's sanity. Jack is also more of a loving and protective figure in the book, and the haunting is more overt. On the other hand, Kubrick portrayed Jack in a far colder and more negative light, and he introduced many ambiguous elements to the story that were not present in the straightforward novel. King famously dislikes Kubrick's iteration, and it's easy to understand why. For that reason, it's impossible to find a true winner. It entirely depends on what you're looking for. A straightforward and personal horror story or Stanley Kubrick? Come and play with us, Daddy. That said, the Doctor Sleep movie is excellent. Winner, it's a tie. Number 2. It Hiya, Georgie. What a nice poem. Do you want it back? Despite being one of King's most popular works, It will forever remain an inherently flawed story owing to one glaring problem, the adults. In both the miniseries and the films, all sense of escalation and momentum is killed in the second half when the story shifts to the adults. I believe in the Tooth Fairy, but I don't believe in you. The miniseries contains some truly dreadful acting, and despite a strong cast, the 2019 film fell disappointingly short of its 2017 predecessor. Yeah, that's right! Let's dance! Yippee-ki-yay, 
This issue isn't so glaringly obvious in the novel, as King's characterization is stronger and he structures the story in a more palatable manner. There's also a lot more to the book owing to its unbelievable length, which includes a lot of great character work, action, and expanded lore. Decent movie series, but way better novel. Winner, book. See you in your dreams. Oh, come back anytime. Bring your friends. By the way, it's partly my fault that we have The Shining as a tie because I much prefer the book. But I will watch the movie a million times if I can avoid the travesty of an adaptation that we have at our number one pick. So, constant reader, let's look through some honorable mentions before we name our best Stephen King story and whether it's better as a book or a movie. Gerald's Game. Winner, movie. Carla Gugino's incredible performance pushes the movie over the edge. Who are you? <laughs> I need help. <laughs> Thinner, winner, book. Not one of King's better efforts, but certainly better than the movie. You mean you're putting the weight back on? Well, then that's wonderful. Today I skip lunch. Instead of coming in three pounds lighter when I get home from the office, I'm six pounds lighter. Oh. So you see, Heidi, I have to eat like this. 1408, winner, movie. This movie expands on its short source material in rich and horrifying fashion. <laughs> Cell, winner, book. This one isn't even close. Good always conquers evil. I, I, I believe that. The Dead Zone, winner, movie. You just can't go wrong with Christopher Walken. You're gonna die, I'm gonna die. You wanna know if you're gonna die tomorrow. Is that right? You wanna know why your sister killed herself. Right. Go. It's not all right. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, The Dark Tower. This is King's magnum opus. But I saw your you. Your dreams deceived you, boy. Told you what you want to hear. Not only does the story span eight novels and one short story, it combines the lore of King's other stories through his so-called multiverse. While the series undoubtedly wanes a little after Wizard and Glass, it remains King's most thrillingly ambitious work, and it makes for some truly engrossing reading. The movie, on the other hand, is horrible. Get ready. Tall, dark, and handsome is about to crash the party. Despicable. Stay far, far away. Treat it like the deadlights and don't even look at it. Compression issues aside, it's just a poorly edited, incomprehensible mess of a movie. It's technically a sequel to the novels and not an adaptation, so diehard fans may want to check it out for closure's sake. Don't. Winner, books. Shame on you. I know I have some hot takes when it comes to Stephen King, but I do not think that is one of them. So, do you think we got it right? Which do you prefer, the book or the movie? And is there anyone out there who actually liked the Dark Tower movie? Come chat with me in the comments, or better yet, come talk to me on Twitter or Instagram at Rebecca Brayton or on my YouTube channel. See ya.